when I started doing um, classes called, I, uh, God gave me this, when I was up there, I was up there earlier this week, and a few hours ago, God gave me this, the pro, this program will be from homeless to holiness. Uh. Oh, uh, this is so old. Old. So, my plan is to have everybody out in 90 days and you just doing your own stuff. You're going to be doing your own stuff. You the boss. You're going to be, you're going to be able to be a blessing to us. Y'all can never do it. So, by May, the exit plan, May 1st, everybody going to have their own stuff. If you stick with the plank, all right. You have to stick with the plank, all right. So what we gonna so we, what we gonna do? We gonna pray first. And once we pray, then we are gonna go ahead and get into um, discipleship. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for taking us this far, Father Lord. We, Lord, as we continue to go on faith, Father Lord, as we continue to trust you, Father Lord, we asking you right now, Father Lord, to help us be steadfast, unmovable, always abiding in your work, Lord. For as much as we know that our labor would not be in vain, Father Lord. Lord, every device of the enemy, Father Lord, any, any, any um, um, the tricks of the enemy, Father, that may be in front of us, Father Lord, we immediately bind and rebuke it right now, Lord, and we give you, we, we give, we give you, a, we get, we get authority, Lord, from just knowing, Father, Lord, you can take us out of everything that we are, that we're in right now. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify you, Lord, we ask you, Lord, as we go into this this study, Father Lord, we ask you right now, Father, that somebody get some out of it, Father Lord, and apply it to their life. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. 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 All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pass around. Can you just pick that up from my, my belly? In the way. <laughs> 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 All right. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give two people a sheet of paper. I want you all to um, fold it and tear it in half. I'm gonna give each and every one of y'all a pen, and I'm gonna tell you what to do with it in a few minutes. All right. <laughs> So y'all get four and a half and then you know two more times. Y'all can share that. Y'all can share that. Arizona. It don't matter. So y'all two share. You two share. You're welcome. Thank you. There's a quarter there. I think it employs it too. Alright, who don't have a who don't have a pen? Make sure I get the pen. Okay. There you go. I got you. I'll do your writing for you. Yeah, uh, yeah. You got one. You got, one. you got a pen? I'm talking about. You had five thousand pens a while ago. I'll better get you there. Okay. <laughs> Somebody else is from better writing than me. Come on. I can't uh, even understand. Uh, you can do it. What's your name? You're gonna do it. You want me to tell you it for you? No, know, I keep trying to figure out. <laughs> he said he needs somebody to write for him. Oh, Lord. Hey. Watch me on everybody. You can't make oh. <laughs> that. Case, that guy the whole thing. Him, you may already know the answer. Mm. And you can answer them from out of view of the camera. Yeah. 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 Nobody out of view of the camera. <laughs> you think that'll work okay, Pastor? Huh? If she right for him. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I can't. Okay. But, but, I'm but okay. right. let me tell you all what I want you to write. Uh, I, let's let's uh, try to do it in five minutes. Okay. 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 All right. What I want you to do, <clears throat> I want you to write down certain things that you feel you need to work on. The second thing I want you to do is what you think your biggest downfall is. Five minutes to do that, and I'm gonna show you. I'm, you are gonna find out what we're gonna do with this. You want five things? No, I want however many things you got. <laughs> <laughs> things that are bad for me, right? Yeah. That, so, uh, certain things that you feel you need to work on, and then number two, what you feel is your biggest downfall. 
I mean, it, it, it don't have to be drunk. It, ain't, it may not even be drunk. It may be something else. It may be something else that you got that you need to work on. You feel that you that you want to be better. The second question is. The second question. Yeah. What is your What is your biggest, biggest downfall? How you say it? Favorite. I let you go first since you got to go more. All right. Pretty <clears throat> much broke mine all down into two. Okay. All right, Ms. Hayden. All right. Um, Stand up, please. Come to the front. Uh oh. I'm going to teach you all how to be, no matter what situation you're in, you, you've always got to show authority in everything that you do. I don't care what your situation is, I don't care how. How much you feel like that you don't have it in you? Everything that you do, you do with authority. Because when you do things with authority, you show people that you really want what you want. All right. All right. So, um, I did name my three things. Um, so for number one, ask the question, what do you need to work on? Um, I said need to work on investing. Okay. Um, no, no, I tell you what, when we get to you, if you already know the answer, you can get to it. Okay? Uh, so it's not started. Everybody attention. Um, so, um, I've written down for 90 days for 80 months. So, the question is, what do you need to work on? So, I put, um, need to work on investing and everything like that, because I'm pretty much good at saving. And then for two... Oh, hold on, um, stop, stop going. Okay, so you said... You said that the main thing you, you feel that you need to work on is investing, but you know how to save. Yes, sir. Okay. Now I got one question for you. How are you saving? Um, honestly, that's a hard question because um, I haven't got anything just yet mm -hmm. since I went to the dime box drawer. Mm -hmm. So um, mainly, I really can't invest right now or save because it's all going to my bills. So I have to explain how to do that to start saving. Okay. All right. So before you before you got in your situation. Were you investing? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So, tell everybody how you was investing. Um, how I was investing. Um, I was working from home for tele performance as a tax CFP supervisor. Um, I was investing in my YouTube channel. That's how I got where I am today. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, like as in, you know, being an entrepreneur as a businesswoman, you know, for uh, for example, lashes. I sell those, and uh, more things are going to be selling. So that's how I basically invested. Put money back. Well, I, I pay my bills first ahead of time before I do, and then I just uh, put money back in the same and invest in myself. Okay. Now, now go to the second question. Sure. So, um, my biggest downfall would be is try not to mess up at work or anything, and to I just always expect I just to I, I, I always try to be perfect uh, to try not to make accidental mistakes. You know, we we're not perfect. We all gonna make mistakes and everything. So that's my problem. My biggest downfall. I'd be scared to mess up. Okay. So out of all what you just told, you told us, mm -hmm. what did you get from what you just said? Um, let's see. Basically. So I'm going to ask you this. Do you tie? Tied. Tied. Yes. You tie? Tied. Tied. You know tied? Like tied. Like tied to the church. Well, yes, church. Sir, that. Okay. I thought it was tied. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Um, I tied and everything. Um. But yeah, I tied this thing. No, 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 we gonna get down to the we, yes, we getting down to the root of the problem. Next. Okay. So mm -hmm. now you say you tied. Yes, sir. But you you start talking and then the spirit took you somewhere else. It did. So so now so come back <laughs> and okay, you say you tied, keep going. So you don't tie it all the time. Not all the time, just when I can and everything. Okay, know. okay, no, this, this is another thing that I want to teach you all. Tithing is not always about money. Okay? I got to write that down. Tithing is not always about money. <coughs> right. 
You just check my brain. What I'm saying is, if you don't have the money, show God that you're willing to give him your time mm. he was talking to about him. Me. And once you show God that you want to give your time to him, then he will bless you with the money to tithe. Amen. So what you need to focus on, if you don't have so well, well, Pastor, I don't have no money. And it's okay. But my question is, are you giving God your time? And I'm not just talking about reading one verse and close your Bible. I'm talking about really getting in your corner, getting in your prayer closet, and you giving and you giving God your undivided attention. Uh, uh, uh. Sometimes we hang on to the coattails of others. Mm. And we be in the gap of everybody else. And that's why you're being saved. Mm. But what if God take that person from you? <laughs> you can't do it for yourself. You ain't taught the fish. There you, you go. Mm. Now you're stuck. Because so let, um, don't what if God takes him from you? Mm. That would hurt me. Because I see that he's your saving grace. But God wants you to stand on your own. And I'm not, I promise you, I'm not picking it. But I got to be real. God wants you by yourself to get that one-on-one -on -one time with him. It's okay to be in a group and be with God. Because when they say with two or three of gathering his name, that will I be in the midst of him. But there are some times that you got to get to yourself. Just you and him. Just you and him. And God will give you the answer to whatever you need. Because when I go go home tonight, you're gonna, you gonna think you're gonna pray and ask God to give you a vision and give you a mission mm -hmm. for each and every one of your life. And then Thursday, you're going to bring it back, and, you, and then whatever God told you, you're going to present it. And then we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to make your vision come to pass. Oh, that's nice. All right? I like that. So, so now we have to stop trying to hang on to everybody else's coattail and get that own relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Tied in your time. Like, them two, they say, well, um, well Pastor, we're going to go ahead and sweep. We're going to go ahead and sweep. Sis, I see that it's dirty. Mm -hmm. And I said, I appreciate it. God is like that in the spiritual. If God sees, if you see that a part of you is dirty, mm -hmm. you acknowledge to God, Lord, I am messing up in this area. And I know that I need to clean up in this area. So, Lord, I'm going to sweep in this situation so I can clean myself up. But you have to acknowledge that you got a problem. You cannot keep putting your problems on everybody else. Man. And you got to find out when you stop doing that, you start seeing changes. And then God start intervening in every one of your situations, and then you're going to find yourself not sad no more. That's how I end up here. You're going to find yourself, whoo, I'm free. You may not still be in the situation you desire to be, but you got to start. Because you could be sleeping on a bridge right now. Uh, mm. Mm. No you could be in a tent that's tore up. On the steps in the right now. Exactly. When I went down there this weekend, I seen somebody eating dog food. Mm -hmm. That can be you. But God allowed me to be the vessel to be y'all saving grace. Amen. Amen. So you can get another chance to get it right. Yeah. I'm taking mine. Yep. <laughs> And then the point is, we become in a reprobated mind. Who knows what a reprobated, reprobated mind is? Reprobated mind means everyone. He gave themselves over to reprobate know what's right mind. Oh, one, one, one person, one person, one person. You don't you know what's right, and huh? you don't know what's wrong. Incorrect. All I know is the Bible says he gives them over to a reprobate mind. She was yeah, talking about right. homosexuality, but 
in that. It's, no, it's, it's more than that. It's more than that. No, it's, it's sins. It's anything okay, let, let me explain what reprobate sin. mind is. So, so, so you all know. A reprobated mind means that you have no sense of doing right. That's what I meant. I, just, I, just, I was just yeah, you got to the point is, and, and, and then y'all, I, I know Romans 10, Romans, Romans 10 tell us, that's your call from the name below it, shall be saved. And, oh, I, I, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. Yeah. But the point is, when you break the covenant with God, you are no longer saved. Here's the price of salvation. When you make it, if you go get a car and you get that agreement, mm -hmm. and if you don't pay on that car, guess what's gonna happen? They come and get that They're car. gonna come and repossess <laughs> that, that car. car. And guess what? You're gonna have to pay to get it. Not only for the car, but you're gonna the have to pay the, for the tow too. The cost to come get the car. <laughs> God is the same way. Even though He allows you to come back, there's still a price to pay. That you choose to pay though. Oh, do you? By not doing oh, right. Let me talk. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to keep now, it <laughs> Even though God allows you to come back mm -hmm. and start the process over, there's still a price to pay. And you got to remember how you got in that situation. So when you remember how you got in that situation, now you got to remember not to do that again. But if you keep doing it over and over and over again, because if you read in Revelation, it say you can not be you can either be hot or be cold or cold, but you cannot be lukewarm. Yeah, because if you be lukewarm, he will spew you mm -hmm. out of his mouth. Oh, that gave me. You don't follow for your name get deleted. So, so, so the point, the what point I'm trying to tell you is, you cannot live this along the fence. You either in or you either out. God is telling me to tell you all, I don't care what your situation is. I don't care if it's drugs. I don't care if it's you just, just depressed. I don't care. I don't care what it is. You got to know that God is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. What, what that mean, Pastor? Uh, what I'm trying to tell you is that God already has the answer. You just got to continue to trust in him even in your situation. Amen. Amen. Because we run away from what we got going on. And that is how we end up in situations that we are in. Because we run away from it. And then we run away from it when we try to come back. It's too late. And now we're in the situation. Again. And you're like, Lord, how in the world did I get back in? What is wrong with me? Uh, somebody put me back in co-part. Mm. So, so when she was talking about, she's like, I, I didn't have the money to tie. Well, did you give God your time? Mm. Did you sit down and tell God your problems? Did you, did you trust in the word that he, 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 he laid before you? Did you, did you trust when he told Job, though they slay me, yet will I trust you? Mm. Do you trust in the word when he told them, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. So even in the situation that you're in, you're like, you know what, Lord? I may be down right now, but Lord, I know I'm going to come out because I'm going to trust in you. Hallelujah. Hmm. I'm not going to turn to drugs. I'm not going to turn to meth. I'm not going to turn to drinking. I'm not going to turn to depression. I'm not going to turn to my, my mama did me wrong. My daddy did me wrong. My sister did me wrong. Somebody wrecked me. Somebody molest me. Lord, I'm not going to turn to that. But Lord, I'm going to trust in you. Amen. And that's what the mindset I want to give you all is that you got to have authority in every, one, every aspect of your life. Forget the people who done you wrong. It's over with. You can't go back and change it. You can't go back and turn back the hands of time. What matters now is what you're going to do from this point forward. Because that is what God is looking at now. God said, I forgave you for everything that you've done. But God said, now from this point forward, I'm going to see something different. And when you walk with authority, you walk Christ-like. 
You can't use an excuse, well, Lord going to forgive me anyway. He's a forgiving God. Yes, he is a forgiving God. But then you keep on saying that, you're going to be turned into a reprobate mind. Because you're going to use that as a crutch to sin. Never really giving up. The sin. And you really never gave up what you had going on. So you really never, because repent means to turn away. It goes the other way. So if you don't turn away from what you're doing, you never repent. Mm -hmm. If you didn't stop doing those drugs, you never repent. If you didn't never, you didn't never stop doing what, 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 everything that's against God, you never repent. You a hypocrite. Damn, you took the words out of my mouth. God said, you are a hypocrite. Mm. Mm. So when you try to pick up something, and I promise you I'm not talking about nobody. I just want to see y'all make it. If you feel that, you, that you're getting weak, because I, I seen in the prison, I, my whole bed, I seen people who was fiending. They, they, they got away from the building, they were fiending, and they was trying to find another escape. What was the Jesus? They were taking Seroquel. They, they were taking all kinds of medicine, what they call pill call. They were trying to take the medicine from the people who really need it. <laughs> <laughs> you need to stop it. I'm just telling the truth. They do that in jail. Yeah. But God say. The reason why you the reason why you haven't let go is because you really? never even came to me. You really trust me. You really just did. Can I hold your Bible? You just did what the word is saying. And you just you just read the scripture, but you didn't lean on the scripture. You just know that I will save. Lord said, you just know that I will save you. No, I know I leaned on But you didn't lean, you didn't understand what I was saying. You, you, didn't, you didn't take it heed to what I was telling you. But God said, I want you to lean on the word. Mm. All right. Um, I'm ready. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm ready. I want to do this thing. Mm -hmm. show, you got to be authority. You got, you got to show authority. But when you come up here, you tell the enemy, I'm, 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 tired. I'm tired of doing this. I'm tired of struggling. I'm tired of going through this. I'm Kelly. Hello. 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> she had to do that, mm -hmm. huh? Um, okay, so uh, my topic would be the situation of like turning back and not always turning to your third thought. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The goal, the goal being to not keep turning around to look back. So it's just how to look forward, <clears throat> excuse me, not backwards. Even though mm -hmm. my past has to lead me, mm -hmm. in, Jesus, in Jesus' name, there has to be the, the finish line. Mm -hmm. That's where the finish line stops. Okay. Now, okay, one, one, one question before you keep going. What causes you to turn back? Perhaps maybe not seeing myself the way I want to see myself. Perhaps seeing things about myself that aren't good enough. But I, I, I know that sometimes it's maybe it's just the self subconscious, whatever it may be. But it's more like um, accepting from my past. Like I said, my past. Will come up, to, come up, and try to pat me on the shoulder and go, "Hey, you're not good enough." And then I'll go, "Wait a minute, you're back here and you're alive, you know." But God's up here and He's telling me I'm good enough, you know. And if I'm the course the image of God, mm -hmm. that, the image of God, I must have what He has. Let's try, you know me. <laughs> so. Anyhow. Okay, now my question. This is my question. Okay, you said the what turns you what turns you back. I'm gonna make sure I got this right before I say right. You said what turns you back is what. I want to hear it one more time. Not being good enough. Not being good enough. Now I'm gonna tell you three things that you got for me. You're a beautiful woman. 
<laughs> That's number one. So I, don't, I don't know why you got to say that. Number two. I'm going to tell you what I thought. You didn't even tell me. You're allowed what, some, what other people did to you previously to dictate how you react to certain situations. You're allowed what other people did. Not what you did. What other people did. You feel that you got to be with the crowd. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you what I mean, be with the crowd. You don't want to be left out of anything. You want to be a part of something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whether whether it's good or bad, you want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's why you keep in it back in situations because you feel that you want to be a part of something. So how do you change that mindset? Stop looking at the things that I'm not with you. Not that I'm not that way because I'm, well, in the word it says that I'm not. Mm -hmm. okay. So that, the character of my defect, uh, my right. character defects do that for me. Okay. So, but for me, to me. Okay. And so, okay. like I said, I gotta look, look, not stop looking back mm -hmm. and look forward with God because I promise all the promises that He, you know, He has given me mm -hmm. to read daily. Mm -hmm. I try to do it on my own. But when I don't daily do do this daily and pick up my cross, okay. that that's the, that's exactly what it is. Okay. When daily I'm not picking up that cross because mm -hmm. you have to constantly be. Because once you let it down, I guess you can. You try to yep. peek over your shoulder. Yeah, that's right. Something wrong. That's right. Mm -hmm. Say whoop. And if you want to turn my pen around, go like this. Mm -hmm. You know. Pop him, yeah. Do the backhand thing. Get out of my way, devil. Huh? So, I'm going to tell you something. That's all I got there. <laughs> he reminds me of the time. I think you have to explain it. No. <laughs> if you all don't know who Simon is, that's the one that carried the cross mm -hmm. for Jesus to be crucified. Right. Bart, man. Mm -hmm. Got there and stood it up. And the very man that he had, he, he, you know, he knew he did nothing wrong. He was a part of the ritual. Now, every time that you do wrong, you think about he's your son. He has, he has to, he has to put up the cross for you to be crucified because you're not walking in the way you're supposed to walk. And see, what you're not, what you keep forgetting is he's suffering more than you. Mm. Yeah, it makes me want to do better. But he's my, he's my inspiration. And, and, and I hear, I hear what you're saying, but are you doing that? Trying to, not, not hard enough. But see, the point is, you can't put yourself in situations that will put you back to where you were just at. Yeah. Why do y'all think God brought y'all to the country? How much you get so fresh yet? That's number one. <laughs> <laughs> but another, God wants you away from all of that stuff. All that commotion, all them distractions. All those distractions. Yeah. So you can focus on what you need to focus on. And look how peaceful it is here. God said, this is the time, this is the time you need to be talking to me. You got nothing to do but me and you come together. There you go, exactly. Even when Israel was free, they wanted to stay because the people were taken care of. Babylon was taken care of. <laughs> they, they felt that they weren't going to get fed. They felt that they weren't going to be able to survive because of the situation they was in for over 400 years. So they said, well, I might have to slave, but at least I got me some bread to eat. At least I got me some water. Yeah. They, didn't, they weren't thinking about, man, I ain't got to work no more for these folks. Okay, they're not thinking about that. See, sometimes we get comfortable in our situation. That's right. And when we get comfortable in our situation, you will find out that you will stay in the situation. Yeah. No matter how many times you say, I want to do better. No matter how many times you say, 
I, I want to get out of this. If you're comfortable, you're not coming out. Because you feel that if you come out of it, that you won't win. It's going to be too much work. You're supposed to get away from it. See, y'all think don't make you feel good, but it's not don't making you feel good. It's the enemy making you feel good, thinking that it's the right thing to do. But if you stop doing the dope, even though you may go through a process of withdrawal. Better on the end. Because let me tell you something. Even when you go to a bank, if you got money in the bank, and you would draw that money to pay a bill, you feel depressed, like, dang, like I'm just working for, 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 uh, for bills. I ain't got no money of my own. But you got to have the comfort to know that at least I ain't got to worry about sleeping on the, st sleeping on the street. At least I ain't got to worry about sleeping, sleeping in my car. If my flashlight charged. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you ain't got to worry. See, you got, you got to look at the positivity of the situation. Instead of, instead of me, Focusing on that, I ain't got no money to take care of y'all. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. That's how the thing goes. How we gonna get up and get them off the floor? <laughs> but I'm not focusing on that. Mm -mm. I'm focusing on, I want to see y'all do better. Mm -hmm. That is what brings me joy. Yeah. So I'm not worried about what's the real problem. I'm not worried about the real problem. <laughs> But that's what God is trying to tell you all. When you don't worry about the problem, I got you. and you work on, you, you, you just think about the vision which you take, and you take the solution of what it can be, God is going to work out the problem. That's what I've been doing right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I've been doing right there. Okay. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So, that's why I can't be still. <laughs> I'm working on the solution. Don't, don't focus on that you don't have no weed. Don't focus on you don't have no weed. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Don't give focus me on some, you. Give me some. Don't, don't focus me. on you ain't got no cigarette. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but it's, it's, it's I got to give me some. Here. I got to give me oh, Okay, think about this. I, I, I'm finna I'm I'm hit something. I'm finna hit something home. Watch this. I, I promise you all never thought about this. How many people got in this room? Can One, I go next? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How many people smoke? Regular cigarettes. Just say regular cigarettes. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's take out five, right? Oh, I thought you were going to take something else. How much is a pack of cigarettes? Too much. Oh, no, <laughs> how much is a pack of cigarettes? Five, six dollars. Five, six dollars. Just say six dollars if you don't say five. Okay, how many packs of cigarettes do you smoke in a year? Watch this. I'm going to show y'all something. Probably 10, 14. Packs. So, so you're looking at six, um, um, 80, I need I mean, my calculator. Eighty-four dollars. Eighty-four dollars a week. Eighty whole. Five people. Eighty-four dollars. That's four hundred twenty dollars a week. In cigarettes. In cigarettes. Take it easy. Four hundred. How, how much I said? Four hundred what? 